Nothing. <laughs> Joke's on you, no surprise. The slowest reveal ever. Oh, look at that. It's like twins. Not really. Twins. But yeah, just wrecked my platinum truck. <clears throat> All right, back to work. What do you guys think of that? That is a track frame on a D8 dozer. That's the other side of it. So we're doing a little bit of maintenance uh, this week, it feels like. Um, we're doing, a, doing the track frame on the D8 dozer. Uh, we had to change all the rollers, idlers, whatever you want to call them on the bottom. And uh, we're working on that, putting that back together. And then over here on the other side of the woods, we're working on the grinder. And you probably saw earlier in the video the new work truck that we just bought we just picked up this morning and uh got the vinyl wrap done so let's go over here and i'll show you what's going on over here a lot of fun maintenance projects going on right now one five fifty two five fifty it's like a green color kind of like it Looking good. It's like a whole new truck now. Loggers are leaving. Toot toot. Winsco, Winsco, Winsco. You know any good land clearing guys? Winsco, that's the answer. So what are we doing to the grinder today? Today we are putting new wear plates uh, between the hammers and the teeth. There's a, there's a small plate that goes in between those and it is what it's called it's a it's a wear plate so basically you got to change them out every once in a while because sometimes when a tooth pops off it wears those wear plates down and then the teeth don't sit flat on the hammer what you doing sitting on my trailer You're so well behaved that's my trailer and you're barking at me Rude.
What's going on everybody? So I'm out here in Bowling Springs and getting ready to head back to the house. Uh, so we got a couple things going on out here, but uh, earlier in the video, you guys got to see the, the D8 dozer. Um, we had to do a track repair on it. The seal going to the track frame, uh, there's like just like a big rubber seal and it had a hole in it. So we had to break that down and fix it. But on top of that, there was some rollers and idlers and stuff that also needed to be repaired. So, and my goodness, those track parts are not cheap. The, uh, I'm not doing a whole undercarriage on it, but we got a price for a whole undercarriage, just parts was $67,500 on a full undercarriage, not including labor. So, but anyway, uh, we're just fixing what we need to right now to get it back up and going because that is a lot of money to spend this time of year uh, in the rainy season of, of this industry. So, but anyway, and we don't really want it down because we're pretty busy and we need to get some work done. So, um, and then the other thing you guys probably saw in the previous video clips was the grinder. Uh, we had to just, it was, we had to do some welding on it, but it was kind of like maintenance stuff. So when you bolt the teeth down or bits, as they say, down to the hammer on the drum, uh, in between the tooth and the hammer, there's a plate. It's a, it's a wear plate. They call, the technical term is called a bit spacer. And that bit spacer is uh, a common wear plate. So it's designed like, it's like a little half inch piece of metal, like a, like a rectangle. And it's got the two holes in for the, the tooth, you know, for the bolts for the teeth. Anyway, when a tooth falls off the thing, it's designed to wear that plate out before it wears a hammer out because you don't want to have to replace a hammer. So basically I think we had about eight of them that broke off on the grinder because we had a, something went through the grinder. I don't freaking remember. Oh, we had a, a screen fold in half and go through the grinder and then it broke in half. Uh, that's why we were missing those. So had to put a new screen in the great supports or the screen supports underneath that had to be replaced. It was a catastrophe and then it ripped off those little bit spacer things but all that fixing was a lot cheaper than buying a whole new mill so i'm not really upset about it but um anyway so we we're doing that on the grinder and uh today we're just running the grinder and the six and the traco so um i guess while i'm here before i leave the job i'll show you guys what the track frame and stuff looks like more so dozer um it's a d8n it's a 95 model uh we bought this i guess like end of last year or summertime or something like that we bought it from the same guy that we bought the six from both at the same time so um so anyway uh where do we start here so this thing has like i think that's a equalizer bar they call it this this big one right here comes out of the dozer goes all the way through the other side well anyway it's got gear oil that comes down in there and feeds it and that's what keeps it lubed up that's the way it works so uh there's a seal on the track frame and it had a hole in it and it was just constantly leaking gear oil and we we're having to pour it in there every day so it, it was literally like i think a hundred dollar seal but it required taking this whole thing off just to fix that one problem um I don't know the term for that bar right there, like a pivot bar, or pivot axle, or maybe it is the equalizer bar. But anyway, that actually, if you don't know, if you got it, you get down in between the tracks, there's actually grease fittings right there. And you see my guys, they do a good job. They grease it. So that's how it should be. That is uh, part of the track right there. That's the C frame and the rake off the dozer. This is the, this is what makes this dozer so awesome right here. This big old C-frame. And that's what it looks like with that one on it. But anyway, on to the important part. So this is the track frame and that is the front, that is the back and it is upside down right now. So I'm trying to remember where we got these parts. I think it's called ITR. Yeah, ITR, that was the name of them. Um, where is it at? Where is it at? All right. So here's the seal. So this is obviously like the top. If you were to flip it back over, it had this like big massive hole in it. 
and it was just completely leaking so it was causing a lot of issues um having to like put gear oil on it every day and we found out that the lucas oil stabilizer for engine oil mixed with gear oil was actually slowing it down from leaking as silly as that sounds but to keep production going we had to because the seal was on national back order and they still haven't come in and then we found it from another source that we were able to get it quicker so the next story is that rear idler that is now brand new um it just got all warped to crap and basically rendered itself useless dried itself out and then what happened was it the this part here it, it it wore out so bad it started eating into this but we found out that there's like a little shim that actually is designed to go in there i guess it's like a wear item so those are on national back order and cat looked it up there was only two in the whole world and they were in australia and kangaroos aren't shipping anything this time of year so what we did was we took the ones off the front you see there's like clearly a gap right there and there's nothing wrong with this one so we took these front ones out just to test our theory because we actually didn't know that this was a part and we put them in the back and then we uh snugged it all back up and it fit perfectly nice and tight just like the way it was supposed to so i told the mechanic i said hey why don't we just try and take those two to a machine shop have them duplicate them for us and machine them and we can just put it back together and that's how it's working out so but anyway pretty excited um i got a really good mechanic that's uh helping us out with this made really good friends with them his name is jesse maxi and i think the name of his company is upstate diesel and equipment repair and he's a super honest guy and he's really uh fair with his labor rates and stuff and he works on everything for us that obviously we can't work on so um but anyway he also hooked me up with like you know like the aftermarket uh track parts and stuff like that these were a lot cheaper than buying them from cat so um and they're really good and they have uh they actually come with warranties on them and stuff too so but anyway uh just to give you an idea this one roller right here was 750 plus tax and there's like eight of them uh that right there i want to say it was like 18 i think it was 1800 dollars or something for this rear idler right here so um like i said we're just kind of fixing the bare minimum on it just to put it back together and just keep working and maybe like in the summertime we'll spend some more money on it or something but undercarriages for a d8 are not cheap and this is a massive this track frame is probably like almost the length it's about two-thirds of the length of that f550 so they're pretty big we actually used a crane on a, on his service truck and a traco to pick that track frame up and then pop it off and flip it over and it's just a lot easier putting them rollers in that's what a dirty track frame looks like so but anyway you gotta pay to play they say so they're out there doing some grinding and i'm gonna head back to the house to build something for the cows and also build a dog house maybe a dog house that i'll be sleeping in one day i don't know that's a big old machine right there i think the sprocket's got some life left in it though it's still pretty thick but anyway all right I think, I don't know if I showed you guys the new work truck or not. We could do that another day. Oh, I finally got this truck back. You guys probably haven't seen this in a video in a while. Well, funny story. So I haven't had my personal truck for about almost a month. And the reason why is, uh, let's see, it's got, well, it had 14,000 miles on it when this happened. The, uh, <clears throat> The rear drive shaft one day just dropped out of the truck uh, where the U-joint is to the rear end. And uh, I'm like, well, this is uh, kind of dumb. This is a brand new truck. So once again, U-joint was on national back order and the first Ford dealership I talked to didn't have time to talk to me. So I was like, well, that's fine. I will go somewhere else. And that's probably why I never bought a truck from you. So. I went to another dealership. That was when I found out the U-joint was on back order. Then I went to a auto parts, the U-joint. They couldn't look it up because the truck was too new. 
And then I went to the last resort, which was Carolina Driveline. And that's all they do is build drive shafts and whatnot. So, oh, no problem. I get you a, get you a U joint, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, let's go underneath the truck and we'll measure up. We'll make, make we will make for sure that we are getting the right U joint. So crawled underneath the truck and we found another problem. This brand new F-350 Platinum. Not only did the U-joint break, the U-joint broke because the saddle that's welded to the axle housing uh, where the blocks and then the leaf springs bolt to, that saddle where it's welded to the housing was literally broken, the weld was broken, the axle was twisted in that clamp, if you will. So I was like, wow, we got a problem here. I go to the Ford dealership and I'm like, for the second, no, yeah, that one went, it was for the second time I went to the Ford dealership. And I was like, we got a bigger problem here. Uh, it's not just the U joint, like, this whole thing is a cluster right here. No, there's no way. What are you doing? What are you towing with it? Well, it's an F 350 diesel truck, uh, maybe a gooseneck trailer every once in a while. So, and uh, he looked at me stupid like he didn't believe the whole situation. Oh, it's just gonna need a drive shaft. That, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. I drop the truck off, and in about two hours, he calls me back. Mr. Miller, uh, have you received a letter in the mail yet from Ford about a recall? And I just smiled, and I was like, oh, do tell me more, because I'm the crazy one. Yeah, so apparently there's a recall. You're getting a whole brand new axle and a drive shaft for that truck. Oh, wow, really? And I said, why is that? Oh, it's because of a defective weld on the leaf spring saddle thing back there. And I was like... I didn't say that earlier. Um, anyway, I was like, cool, can you get it done? So don't worry, we've already ordered the parts. Now mind you, when I brought the truck to them, this now this video's turning into one of those rants, but you gotta listen to the story. This is how incompetent people are. I brought the truck the first time with the drive shaft. I drove the truck in front wheel drive to the shop, to the Ford dealer. The drive shaft was in the back bed. I opened the back bed and I said, look, here's my problem, da 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 da. So the first thing I showed him was the drive shaft and I pointed out the U-joint was broken and also pointed out that the ears on the end of the drive shaft where the U-joint sits in were also damaged too. They were like warped and bent a little bit and it's aluminum so it's, you, you can only bend aluminum so much before it cracks. So anyway, um, long story short, we're like three and a half weeks into this thing. They've put a brand new axle in which by the way, Ford sent an, a, a rear end in pieces. He said it came in a crate but it came in pieces. I don't know if they were telling me the truth there or not. I don't know why Ford would send a rear end and a crate in pieces, and then the shop had to assemble the whole thing. Whatever. I thought, man, this truck should be done here in three weeks, which is kind of a long time. No. I called him at three and a half weeks, and he said, oh yeah, well, we just realized the drive shaft is no good. We can't put it back in there. We're gonna have to order another one, and it's really not a warranty issue. I said, really, it's not a warranty issue, but you told me I was gonna get a new axle and a new drive shaft. Well, we haven't ordered it yet, because we, you know, know what, tell me what, why? So anyway, they had to order a drive shaft after three and a half weeks of having this truck with the broken drive shaft that I brought them. So now we're like, I think four, four and a half weeks into it, and I finally get the truck back. I think I actually paid two payments on this truck while they had it and customer service and like who you are and what you buy from don't mean nothing. Literally in that same week when I brought the truck to him, I had just bought a brand new F550 work truck from that dealership. I don't know folks, I don't know. But anyway, so I'm back in the truck again and then uh, it has a humming noise in the rear end. You might not be able to hear it in the video. I'm kind of going slower, but at about 60 to 70 miles an hour, the rear end has a humming noise to it. See, when I let off the gas, I can actually hear it though. So now I'm gonna have to take the truck back in and then like, I'm gonna, that was the icing on the cake. And now I'm gonna put the cherry on top. You ready for this one? Um, the Ford guy pointed this out to me too, but they forgot to buy this part two or whatever, order it. The, uh, what's the, what's the term for it? The pinion that sits on the rear end that you bolt the dry shaft to, you know, sticks out like that. He called it a rear end flange, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, inside the little holes in there where the U-joint sits in, there's tabs on the outside. That's, I guess, like what stops the cap from falling out of the side of it. 
Well, mine was broken from the recall situation. They put a whole brand new rear axle in this truck and a brand new drive shaft and a brand new joint and they put the rusty, old, broken, tabbed rear end pinion fl drive flange, whatever you want to call it, but they put it back on the truck, broken, the broken ones. So the day I picked the truck up after four and a half weeks, my worker crawls underneath the truck to inspect their work and I didn't, I just trusted them. And I'm glad he did because he pointed it out to me. And I'm like, well, I guess I better go tell them this now so I don't like leave and come back and find it later. And then they're gonna be like, oh no, that had to happen while you had it, you broke it. So they owned up to it. Now they're gonna order that. So now when the, that part comes in that should have already been on the truck, um, then hopefully my other part will come in for, or no, they're gonna like check the rear end and make sure there's no metal shavings in it because they weren't sure if they adjusted the rear end properly or not. But anyway, um, a lot of rambling there, but I don't know. You guys tell me if you think that's crazy or not. I think this tree guy that I'm stopped in the middle of the road for right now, we should video this work here. Thank you. I think they busted a power line. Yeah, I don't know, folks pointing at my truck now. That's that scumbag. Winds go land clearing. Do, 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 do. I think because I have a YouTube channel and a lot of people know my company just like in this little fish pond that I live in right here. Uh, they just don't like me for it. It's probably because I'm not afraid to get on a camera and just talk about what I do for a living every day and like show you guys the truth of the things that go on or something. And most people are just too nervous, I guess, to get on a camera or something. I don't know. But anyway. Um, so there's that. I love my Ford trucks, but uh, I don't know. Some are good and some are bad. This has been a great truck. I think it's frustrating that within 14,000 miles of a brand new 80 nine thousand dollar truck having uh actually with extended warranties and everything i think it's 103 or 108 or something like that but anyway to have a truck that's that new and that expensive and to have that much of an issue and having to put a whole new rear axle in the truck and everything and then forgetting to order a drive shaft that was the first problem um it's just a little ridiculous and you know, another thing that they get you on, if you guys are looking to buy a new Ford vehicle, any kind of Ford vehicle, don't let them sell you on this bull crap. Oh, if you get this extended uh, maintenance thing where they do the oil changes and stuff, because like all my vehicles have that on it. If you pay a little extra money on top of that, you'll get the rental car provision. Tell me about it. What is it? And just, just so you guys know, if you haven't caught on to the sales game yet, you got the sales people that sell you the car and then the finance office. You think they're there to help you and get the right? No. They are just as much a salesman as the first guy that you met. The first guy is gonna convince you to buy the thing. The third guy, or the second guy is gonna convince you to tack on all these other things. And what you don't know is there's a thing called a buy rate. Ford or First Citizen, well, whoever that gets you approved, they're gonna go to the Ford dealer that you're working with and they're gonna say, hey, congratulations your customers approved for like x percent and the dealership is gonna say oh yeah i got you approved for x percent there's a gap there it's usually one to two percent and i've seen it worse than that so those people are like ninjas in there and you don't even know it and they're like Wah! just cutting your head off right there so rental car provision Oh, well, if you get this maintenance plan and you need an oil change and your busy life and your schedule, oh, you're just pulling on my heartstrings right there. Tell me more. We will provide a rental car for you. You just drop your truck off and you'll get your oil change for free because it's part of this maintenance program and you get to take a rental car. No downtime for you. I dropped my truck off for an oil change before this rear end situation. Where's the rental car? 
oh, there's a shortage, a chip shortage. We didn't know we were gonna have that problem. There's no rental car for you. She got pissy with me. I've never swore on my YouTube channel. That might not even be a swear word, but that's as close as I'm gonna get. The lady got pissy with me and said, well, we didn't know we were gonna have a chip shortage, so there ain't no rental cars. I'm like, I just asked. Like, I didn't need to know your whole life story. I'm sorry. So don't let them sell you on the BS of rental car provision because they ain't got none. My wife has three children. We have three children. They are mine. Uh, she takes her three kids, our three kids, and goes to the Ford dealer to drop the truck off for her expedition for an oil change. And she either has to get a ride back home or she's got to sit there. Now an oil change takes 30 to 45 minutes. She will make an appointment and go in there. She will be there for two and a half hours. And this is that moment where I just don't say nothing. I'll just let you like chew on that. So no rental car. I paid extra money for that maintenance plan too, to have the rental car thing. Paid it on this truck. So that whole spiel was like, don't buy that bull crap because they are lying to you. You will waste your money for that. And why don't you do yourself a favor? And if you're sitting in the finance office and you're about to sign papers on a loan for a vehicle, why don't you pull that out on them and say, well, what's the buy rate? And they're gonna look at you like you just caught them with their pants down because they're gonna be like, oh my God, how did this person even know what that term was? Don't tell them you heard it from me. If you don't believe me, try it one day. So I've been in sales for a long time and I know the game and that's just how it works. So, and I mean, I get it. That's how they make their money in the finance business, but there ain't nothing wrong with asking them to get a better deal either. So, but anyway, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, the dozer's getting the tracks fixed on it or a track fixed on it. The grinder had some maintenance. We're, we're grinding again, so that's good. We got a lot of work. The Lord has blessed us tremendously as always. We had a killer 2021 and uh, we almost, we almost doubled what we did the year before. And it was only our third year in business last year. So God has been fantastic. He has done a great job and he has always provided. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have this truck that I'm complaining about right now or my wife's expedition or all my work trucks and stuff. So. Lord, forgive me for complaining. But anyway, I'm not complaining about the blessings. I'm just complaining about the people and their lack of uh, integrity uh, that you're trying to do business with. So, but anyway, God is good. And I'm about to go build this doghouse for my dogs because apparently in South Carolina, it's going to snow this weekend. It was 70 degrees the day after Christmas. And now we're in the first week or second week, whatever, of January. And now we're going to get snow. Who made those rules up? This video is over. I'm going to get back to work because my wife will probably throw something through that window at me because I'm not jumping on this. And um, she is a taskmaster. I got to work a lot when I get home. It ain't just in the field. When I get home, I get right back, back to work. And if I don't, you see here, I'm stuttering right now. It's because I'm fearing it. Like she, I'm scared, I'm not scared of anybody, but I'm scared of my wife. I mean, she can hit hard too. So, and now I'm just saying that because if she watches my videos, she'll probably say something funny and then hit me again later for watching that. So you guys have fun and I'm gonna get back to work and maybe tomorrow I'll show you like some mulching because we don't just do subdivisions, people. We do still do residential jobs, like the little stuff. Like this past weekend, I helped my uncle clear like a half acre in his front yard or something. We just like cleared it up and burned it and it was more fun than it was work. But uh, we do still do residential work. I own a $115,000 brand new skid steer just for those jobs for you and the trucks and the trailers to pull it. So uh, I had somebody say today that they didn't know if I could do their job because they thought we were uh, too big of a company for that. I was like, well, that's great. That means the marketing's working. So, uh, yeah, we do still do residential. Um, I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. And if you need some residential work, uh, call 864-764-2381. Um, and if you don't, you need somebody to talk to call somebody else because I don't know if I got the time to have those conversations. So you get a lot of phone calls like that too from other states about how to start this business. And I love talking to people. 
Um, I don't mind giving a little bit of advice, but there's just so much that needs to be done in a day. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have the time to sit on the phone for two hours and answer questions on how to start up a multi-million dollar land clearing business and and do it for free. So um, just use your head, use common sense, and think twice before you make a move. How about that? That's my advice for today. I'm gonna go build this doghouse because if not, I'm gonna be in hot water. So right now, that wouldn't be a bad idea. It's kind of cold outside. Now I'm being a smart aleck. See you later.